This video has been years in the making, actually. Um, I'm quite excited about this video. It's a problem that I've actually got a part in as well. I've been given permission to give you an exclusive look at this new solution. <gasps> Shh, it's a secret. It's not a secret. I'm going to tell you all. So in this box, we have our new solution to this old problem. I'm building up to this. I think I should start with what the problem is, of course. Imagine four friends and they're going to play a game and they want to decide who goes first, second, third and fourth. Fine. So to do that, they decide to roll dice. They roll one each and whoever has the highest number goes first, second highest number goes second. You get the idea. The only problem with that is two players might roll the same number. Oh no, a draw. So what are they going to do? They could roll again. Well, potentially that could go on forever. Is there a set of four dice? So each player can have one, they roll them together. There are no draws and all equally likely to be first, second, third and fourth. That's the question. Well, that does exist. They're called Go First Dice. They were invented by Eric Harsbarger and Robert Ford about 10 years ago. I've got these actually. So here they are. So these are four. 12 sided dice. They use the numbers from 1 to 48, so there's no repeats. So you're not going to get a draw. That's easily solved. And they've been designed so that you're equally likely to be first, second, third, and fourth. Very nice. As a bonus, though, uh, it also works for subsets. So if you had three friends, they could pick any three of these dice, and that would do the same thing. They would be equally likely to be first, second, and third. Or if you had two friends, they could pick any two of these dice and you'd be equally likely to be first and second. Really nice. Uh, so the question then was, what's it going to look like for five players? Can we make a set of five dice, no draws, and you're equally likely to be first, second, third, fourth and fifth? And that's the question we've got a new solution for. But before I show you that new solution, I want to show you the best answers we've had so far, uh, just to build up to this. The first one I want to show you is one of my own. Okay, I get to do this, my video, I can do that, right? Yeah, okay. I don't know what you imagine it's gonna look like, uh, but this is it. So this is a set of five 60 sided dice. They use the numbers one to 300 and just like they're supposed to, you roll them, you're equally likely to be first, second, third, fourth and fifth. Works for the subsets as well. So that's kind of nice, so there you go. I can that, just see the number. You see, I should have painted in the numbers. Couldn't be bothered. Couldn't be bothered. So this is my solution. I came up with this uh, years ago. Not to be confused, by the way, with things like non-transitive dice or other things you may have seen before. You know, it sounds similar, but it is a different problem. This is a different solution to that. Uh, so this is kind of nice. I, I might tell you a little bit about how we came across it. Uh, so I did this with an internet friend of mine, Brian Pollock, and well, we did a computer search, but to, to do a computer search would take a long time. Uh, if you search through every possible set of five dice, it's just a huge number. We're talking like many, many, many Googles of possibilities, right? Too many to search through. So we did a, a clever search. Uh, so what we did is we looked for dice with a particular nice mathematical structure, and that allowed us to reject the wrong answers really quickly. So we sort of narrowed our search down to these particularly nice kind of dice. So you could reject the wrong ones easily. And then the ones you can't reject, we checked. That's what we did. And that's what we found. We found these 60 sided dice. We knew that the answer, if they're all the same size, like these are, we knew that the dice were going to be 30 sided or a multiple of 30. We didn't find 30 sided dice, but we did find these 60 sided dice. So that's nice. I was proud of this. This is my solution to it. We can do better though, because this solution, you're equally likely to be first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. What about if we make every order of the players equally likely? So A, B, C, D, E is just as likely as E, D, C, B, A. That might sound like the same thing. That's what I thought <laughs> when I said, is it every order equally likely or every place equally likely? As in who gets the highest, second highest, yeah. third highest number, right? Yeah, yeah, I thought, that not that the same? So no, having every order is actually a stronger sense of fairness. This set that I discovered, every place is equally likely. You're equally likely to be first, second, third, fourth and fifth. Every order is not equally likely. 
with this. In fact, uh, A, B, C, D, E is less likely than E, D, C, B, A with this set. Quick question. Yeah. Is every, what about with these ones? Every order is equally likely. It's something we appreciated slightly after the fact. Okay. Right. Oh, okay, but should we make it every order equally likely? Yeah, so that's a downfall of those. I'm, like I said, I, you know, we came up with this idea, I'm quite proud of it, but can we make an even better set? Every order equally likely, that would be nice. Uh, now, the original inventors of the Go First Dice, and that's Eric and Robert, they came up with a solution. Put my set to one side, I'll show you Eric's solution. Yeah. Got it. Can we see? I've got it in this box. <laughs> oh, right, okay. It's a special box. Yep. <laughs> yes, special box for it. Yeah. Well, they look like this. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. the right reaction. You answered my next question, actually. Do the dice all have, have the same number of sides? So, if you relax that condition, here is a set with all weird sides. So they're not all the same number of sides, but this is every order equally likely. We've got a 20-sided dice here. We've got a 36-sided dice here, we've got two 48s, and we've got a 54-sided dice. So this is what we've got, they're all kind of weird values, but every order equally likely. And true for the subsets, it might be worth telling you how these were invented. The idea was uh, you start with a set that you already know is permutation fair. That's what we call it, when all the orders are equally likely. So let's start with um, a set of three dice. They're going to be six-sided dice, and they're going to have these numbers on them. Uh, so let's say A here is going to be 2, 5, 7, 12, 14, and 17. B, I'll do the B, is 3, 4, 8, 11, 13, 18. And we'll do C, which is 1, 6, 9, 10, 15, and 16. There we go. Six-sided dice. They're using numbers 1 to 18 every order is equally likely. What we can do though is turn that set of three into a set of four. So this is, this is how you do it. What we're going to do first, we're going to double the size of these dice. Right, so we're going to repeat it. Two, five, seven, 12, 14, 17. I'm trying to fit them into my piece of paper. Do that again. And for C, okay, one, six, nine, 10, 15, and 16. And so that we don't repeat the numbers, so we can tell them apart, I'm going to add 100 to the first copy and 200 to the second copy, so that now they're different numbers. Look, I've got gaps now. There are numbers less than 100 that I could use. I've got a gap here between 118 and 201. I could use that gap. And I've got a gap here larger than 218. So we're going to create a new one called D. We're going to put values in those gaps, and we can calculate how many values to put in those gaps and keep the set of dice still permutation fair. In this example, if you put one number in the first gap, could be anything I want, I, I call it 50. I could put 50 here, I could put four numbers in that second gap, let's call it 150, and then 151, 152, 153, there you go. And then one number in that last gap, 250, that will do it. That's now a set of four dice, which will still be permutation fair. We can shrink those numbers down as well so that it's all consecutive. But now the new one I've introduced is now six-sided. There's no guarantee that that new die will have the same number of sides as the other dice that you started with and that's why they start to have weird sizes. There are things you can do that like you can make the dice like have the lowest common multiple of that. The dice start to get quite large though. The size of these dice do get quite large. It doesn't have to be two copies either. Sometimes you get a nicer set of dice if you do like three copies and then fill those gaps or like five copies or ten copies. Sometimes you just get a nicer result by doing that instead. Now those two sets of dice I've just shown you were the best answers we had up to about two months ago and Brady, I was going to make this video about two months ago, and that was going to be the end of the video. Just before I came and did that video, uh, we were contacted. Our little team of dice inventors were contacted by a mathematician called Michael Purcell. And he said, I've got a new solution for you. So I'm going to show you that. That's it. That's what I've been building up to. No, that's the box. That's the box over here. So what is it going to be? This is Michael's solution. You ready? 
I'm, I'm trembling with anticipation. <laughs> right, here we go. This is, this is it. This is a set of five 120-sided dice, all the same number of sides, which is nice, and every order is equally likely as well. Uh, so I think this is one of my favourite sets so far. His ideas were completely different to the ideas that we were using. He started with a set of five 12-sided dice, but they weren't completely permutation fair. Any subset of four dice did work. It was only partially there. What he did next is he made 10 copies of that, kind of like this method here. So he made those 12-sided dice into 120-sided dice. That doesn't completely solve it. They're still not permutation fair. What he did next is in the copies, he started to swap the rows over. So in the second copy, he swapped the first row and the third row. In the third copy, he swapped the first row and the fifth row. So he started doing some permutations, as we call them, on the rows within those copies that he made. By doing that, it kind of balanced out all the sort of biases, all the little problems to sort of cancel themselves out. And the result was this set of five 120-sided dice where every order is equally likely. The important thing about that is we kind of knew you could do something like that. There was a team, actually they've got a YouTube channel as well, so I'm gonna give them a little bit of a shout out. Uh, the Polylog YouTube channel, they realized that if you did every permutation on the rows, that would balance out all the biases. They worked that out. But if you do every permutation, these are gonna be huge dice. What Michael has done is he found that you could do it with just 10 permutations, not just using every permutation. And there are some open questions, because he did it with a computer. Is there some mathematical reason or mathematical way to pick the permutations that balance out all those biases? We're not sure about that. We're still thinking about that. You know, is, is there a way to pick the initial seed set of dice? That initial set of dice before we made copies? Is there a good way to pick that? Is there a good way to pick the permutations? That's still problems we're working on. But yes, we're, at least with a computer search, we can use those ideas and we can get this set of five 120-sided dice. Two questions. Yeah, I'm ready. All right. First question is, I'm not questioning your motivation for doing this. I think mm. it's really cool. <laughs> but are go first dice like necessary? Is there a demand in the gaming community for go first dice? No, no. So you can solve this problem in simpler ways. So if I wanted to arrange five people in some order, I would just have five cards with one, two, three, four, five written on it. And then you shuffle that up and they can pick a card. I mean, that's, that's, that's not the point. <laughs> there are easier solutions to this. Um, another easy solution, by the way, to this is you could just have one die with 120 sides on it. Each side would have an order of the five people and then roll that. You could do it with one die. That's not the point either. That's not fun. The fun is five players have one die each and they all roll them. They all have something to do and then it orders them. That's the fun part of it. And the other obvious question that springs to mind is, what about six dice? Now six, yes. So Eric, uh, who originally invented this and is really like our, our boss in all of this, uh, he has a website where he's collating all like the best results. Uh, so for six, shall I just shall I just look at what the answer for six is? All right, yeah. Oh no, I'll save that thought actually. Can I go back a step? Oh, yeah. So da -da -da -da. cool. There is a second punchline to this uh, video because Michael contacted us with this new result and we were so excited by it. A little team of dice experts got working on it. Well, one in particular, Bram Curran, and he started to mix and match our methods. So he started to use a bit of Michael's method, a bit of Eric's method, started to match them together uh, just to see if he could find a better solution. And this is his solution. Uh, so I've got, I've got another set. Oh. This is a set of four 36-sided dice and one 20 sided dice. So it's almost like they're all the same size. They're very similar sizes, like, oh, you're almost all the same size. Also, the dice are 
just so much smaller than than any of these solutions we've got so far. So if you were just looking at adding up all the sides and seeing at, you know trying to minimize that number, then in that case, by that measure, uh, this is the best set we found. So that's more efficient, but that one there's more perfect because they're all the same. Yeah, uh, some of us like to minimize the total number of sides and some of us like to have them all the same because it makes it more like a toy, I feel, but also minimize that number as well. So for six players, the best results we've got now um, using actually Bram's uh, method, uh, the best result we've got a set which is a 20-sided die and then five 360-sided dice. That's quite asymmetrical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, and that's because of how Bram's method worked. So he actually used uh, Michael's method to make the set of dice. And then by induction, he created one extra dice, which is why this one has a different size to all the other dice. So that's why this is the 20-sided dice there, because it's fitting in the gaps. So this is why it's a mix and match of, of these two methods here. Can we do better? Can we find a smaller set of dice? Personally, I want to find a set of five 30-sided dice. Theoretically, uh, we can make a set of five 30-sided dice, but they might not exist. Uh, if they don't exist, can we make a set of five 60-sided dice? Uh, or maybe this set of dice here, maybe this is kind of minimum in its way. Or is it? Again, these are questions we still don't know the answers to. This episode's been supported by our regular and superb sponsor, Brilliant, makers of these world-class interactive lessons and courses. I was, of course, completely unsurprised to learn they have a lot of stuff involving dice, including some of this, which really dives into the sort of stuff you've just been watching. Dice competing against each other and stuff like that. Do make sure you check it out, people. Whether it's for you or the learner in your life, I can't think of a better way to expand your horizons than a subscription to Brilliant. They've just got so much quality material and new stuff's being added all the time, well-designed, thoughtful, and sometimes quite funny. A bit of personality to it. Learn more at brilliant.org slash number file. They've got a free 30-day trial, which is amazing. And using the URL on screen, that's going to get you a 20% discount off their premium offering. There are links and details in the description under the video.